everyone, welcome to Fox and Media Digital. My name's Amy and today I'm joined by Rosan Lam, who's Climate and ESG Strategy Manager at Autech Finance. So welcome Rosan, it's great to have you on the channel. Lovely to be here, thank you Amy. Yeah, of course you're our partner for the Summit for ESG New York last week and we wanted to put the spotlight on you to hear a little bit more about Autech Finance and what you're doing in this space. Um, so first, could you just introduce me to yourself and tell us a bit about your company? Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, my name is Roseanne. I am a strategy manager here at Ortec Finance. Uh, what I do is I contribute to uh, the strategic outlook and product development of our climate and ESG solutions suite. Uh, Ortec Finance is a employee owned firm with really strong research based foundations headquartered in the Netherlands, and we have a growing presence here in the US. Um, the company itself has over 30 years of experience in strategic risk management and economic scenario generation. So scenario analysis really are bread and butter. Uh, maybe a little bit into the climate and ESG solutions themselves. So we have a, a climate compass, which is a suite of complementary solutions that can help investors integrate climate risks and opportunities into investment decision making. And within that, our products capture transition risks, physical risks, market risks, scenario analysis, as mentioned, as well as portfolio alignment. So many different ways that you can um, address the kind of interplay between the financial sector, the economic, the economy, as well as climate change. Fantastic. Thank you for that introduction. And you touched there on risks and opportunities. So it'd be good to you know, take a step back and think about the actual challenges and the issues that are facing investors and asset managers today and think about how your solutions incorporate climate risks and opportunities. Um, yeah, absolutely. So in terms of how our clients really understand and make sense of this information, so um, on the one hand, while uh, climate change will contribute a you know, material financial risk to the performance of um, individual companies, it is also at a higher level, at the sector and region level, really, really important. So certain sectors like um, the energy sector, for example, may be impacted more than other sectors. Um, and that is specific not only to the sectoral level, but also how that will manifest in the US compared to Europe, compared to Asia, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in terms of what re resonates with them, with our clients most, our clients are largely you know, long-term investors. So really looking at the, the quarter century as opposed to the next quarter. Um, so what our clients are really looking at is to understand how climate change will impact capital market assumptions in both a quantitative as well as a qualitative way. And our ability to separate out transition risks, acute and chronic physical risks, as well as explicitly model market risks associated with climate change has really differentiated us in the market. In addition, our models are really at a top-down approach. And that means it really captures the networked effects of climate change at a global level using over 500 modeled sector and region data points. And what this means is, if the Inflation Reduction Act in the US is taken up, what does that mean for the global economy? How does that then trickle on to, let's say, you know, Canada's view on tar sands or how does uh, China's view on net zero then impact the global transition? That's fantastic. So what does that look like day to day for your clients? So when they're using these solutions, you've kind of given a high level overview of what they will do with them, but how do they use them day to day in their jobs? Yeah, so um, it really varies. What we recommend our clients to do is really incorporate our scenarios and our products throughout their firm. So whether it be the risk team looking at the strategic asset allocation, the ALM analyses, to the, um, to, to, you know, ESG sustainability team really looking at uh, reporting in accordance with the TCFD, you know, providing that latest report all the way up to board level to really understand how as a firm, how do they, you know, change their investment beliefs or what are their investment beliefs when it comes specifically to climate change. And this is really important to have these consistent views on how, you know, different transition and physical risks will manifest um, under climate change in order for, you know, actual progress and the transition to occur. 
Yeah, and thinking about the journey to net zero and how uh, climate risk is being addressed in the financial system as a whole, you mentioned some of those developments like the upcoming regulations, the market trends mm-hmm. that, that investors and investment managers are dealing with. What is your attitude towards climate change as a material topic? Yes. Um, so, I mean, we are headquartered in the Netherlands and I'd say uh, Europe has a slightly different and more a different view on the way that climate change is a material topic than the U.S. However, taking a step back, climate change is a financially material topic. And you've seen that in numerous mandatory TCFD disclosure requirements, as well as scenario analysis exercises around the globe. In the U.S. specifically, the SEC has, of course, proposed regulation around what is defined as material overall. And there are going to be winners and losers to climate change at the sector and region level and, of course, at the individual company level. And so our view is in order to really understand which sectors and regions are going to be most affected, is the, that's actually why forward-looking climate analytics are so necessary. However, I want to highlight that the interplay between climate change and the economy is not only limited to financial materiality. In addition to being financially material, as we've seen all these net zero, commi- net zero commitments come to um, fruition, that really brings to light the materiality of how individual investment choices impacts the climate as well. So whether we choose to refer to that as double materiality or not, that is um, ultimately what we're seeing in the market. And so that is also why, you know, just to really emphasize the importance of a consistent set of probable scenarios for both the risk return perspective, as well as the impact perspective. Yeah, that leads nicely into my next question as well, because looking ahead, you know, what the industry can be doing to sort of address all of this, you know, you touched on some of those solutions there, like scenarios, use of analytics. What are the sort of key steps and key solutions that decision makers can be taking to get ahead and actually enable the journey to net zero sustainably? Absolutely. Um, So there are, of course, many providers out there in the market, many solutions being proposed. And what we've really observed as key considerations um, for investors are uh, solutions that are transparent in not only the assumptions, the inputs going in, as well as the methodology, methodology itself. A black box environment does not benefit anybody to transition to net zero or to transition um, to a low carbon economy. And so the transparency is really key to ensure investors are comparing apples to apples. Another consideration that is key is that uh, we provide a solution that's based on science. So climate science needs to be kept close to what the product is. It cannot deviate far from what the IPPCC are saying, what the uh, global community is saying. And in addition to that, um, it needs to be um, complementary using consistent assumptions on how all of these changes will manifest and exactly when those manifestations come to light. Uh, In addition to that, um, we're talking about net zero, and it's hard to talk about net zero and the transition to net zero without talking about portfolio alignment. Portfolio alignment really plays a crucial role in the transition as it is a forward, it's by definition forward looking analysis to help investors contextualize how their investments, um, their investments emissions trajectory really means in relation to a 1.5 degrees world, as well as the Paris Agreement. That's fantastic. I mean, it's great that you have these solutions and that, like you say, there are so many different options out there because it's such a mind field to navigate. Um, but thank you for shedding a bit of insight on, you know, what the investors and asset managers are dealing with and, you know, what, what solutions there are. So thanks so much for joining us, Roseanne. Thank you so much, Amy. And uh, for those who would like to learn more, I've uh, attached the link to our Climate Align as well as Climate Maps webinar on portfolio alignment and scenario analysis, respectively, in the description below. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow our YouTube channel for more content on the challenges and opportunities in asset management, wealth management, and ESG. And don't forget to give this interview a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button.